Hi everybody and welcome back to my modeling channel. So today we're going to build a MiG-25 scale 172 from Hasegawa. So I purchased uh, that kit uh, on the internet, it came just in a box. I have no instruction or whatsoever. So I'm gonna build that kit. I'm gonna use some uh, aftermarket decal that I purchased online as well and they are from the Bejmot, the Russian brand. So let's open the kit first and see what we have inside and uh, then we're going to discuss all the uh, options. So the kit is on uh, four different sprues, they are light grey color and uh, not a lot of details I have to say, that's a very old kit from Azegawa. I can see that the uh, engines are not too detailed, I'll have to uh, do some extra work. Uh, the panel lines are outlined and they are very thin, so they're going to be some uh, rescribing work, I would say. Uh, we have one clear part for the canopy or the cockpit, and I'll, do, uh, I'll be using some masking tape for that later on. But uh, obviously there won't be much details that we can put from the cockpit. Uh, then uh, the other part, basically the uh, initial part, replicate the fuselage, the nose, both uh, engines, there is a seat to pilot and massive air intake. So the second part is uh, the lower part, the underbelly of that uh, MiG-25, there is a part of the uh, exhaust the tail or the fin, a little bit of a detail of that cockpit and the undercarriage and the nose wheel uh, and that's about it. There is one pitot up front and as well the undercarriage. Uh, the third sprue we have a couple of missiles and I'm sure they will have to do some rework on that if I decide to go and fix them on the aircraft, but uh, I'll be needing some more uh, picture from the internet. And uh, we have the uh, mount as well. Then uh, the last sprue, we have uh, the wheels, the wings and the horizontal stabilizer. So that's what we have, uh, that old kit as well, but as you can see the, the decals won't be much of a use, that's why I purchased some other ones. So we have the red stars, a couple of numbers, and the panel for the, the cockpit. But uh, I might try to use that using some, uh, some of my old skills. So now let's have a look on that uh, Beige Mott decal. So it's, uh, I have lots and lots of options. Um, as you can see, there's lots of... Uh, different uh, different parts and you have basically uh, a lot of uh, different uh, options as well you have the Rico version you have the uh, interceptor so and many different countries so basically what you would have here you have the Algerian the Iraqi uh, Ukrainian Bulgarian Soviet of course uh, I think there is the Libyan if I didn't mention it first Indian and Ukrainian uh, Air Force, so lots of different options. Uh, and those are going together. And there is as well uh, a little bit of a mask for either the cockpit and the wheels, I would imagine. So enough of talking, let's start building and let's see what kind of result we can get at the end of that kit. So we're gonna start uh, this kit by preparing our parts. So uh, as you can see, we, we cut initially the parts and then we have to uh, remove the uh, extra plastic on them. So after that, we are going to uh, glue them together. So I will do that for um, the main uh, landing gear and as you can see, the wings. Then what we're going to do is to prepare the uh, air intake of uh, that uh, MiG-25. So there is a little bit of a fitting and adjustments before uh, gluing the part together. Then we're gonna start working on the fuselage. 
So uh, for this we're gonna take of course the two half of the fuselage and then we're gonna work on the cockpit. The cockpit is just located in two parts, it's just above the, um, the nose landing gear and then what we're going to do, we're gonna do that together. But first what we have to do is uh, I took some, uh, some painting uh, and colors and I saw that I need to um, to do some to add some blue with some green to paint inside the cockpit and of course the, the cockpit and a, a part of the ejection seat. So while the paint is drying uh, I'm gonna add uh, some uh, putty and um, fill up all the gaps uh, on the, the wings, the uh, undercarriage and uh, the uh, air intake so uh, that's not much. After that we're gonna start painting the uh, cockpit. For this uh, I did a little bit of a close-up. I'm gonna use some uh, black paint uh, to uh, put on the panels as well uh, as inside the cockpit. As everything was uh, quite basic on this kit I did it myself just with, uh, as you can see, uh, just with a paintbrush and uh, a little bit of uh, time and patience you can get a, a pretty decent result. So uh, you will see uh, all the result uh, toward the end of uh, that cockpit. Now that the cockpit is finished, it's time to uh, close uh, that fuselage. So before that I will add some uh, weight, uh, putting some modeling paste on the nose of the aircraft. This will allow to uh, avoid having the aircraft sitting on its tail. Then uh, of course before closing this up, uh, I will add also the instrument panel. Do a bit of adjustment and then we're gonna glue the part uh, all together using some uh, clamps to get it uh, together. So now what we will do is uh, we're gonna fill the gaps with uh, some uh, Tamiya putty and uh, I think you're quite uh, aware of that uh, long task with me as I'm really trying to fill up uh, all the, the tiny gaps uh, on the fuselage. Uh, so this was no exception so uh, we, had to do, uh, we had to do this part and before that then we uh, close up the fuselage on the top as well. Uh, there was a little bit of a fiddling and adjustment to do, but that was a pretty easy idea. So uh, I had to use some modeling paste, uh, some um, tape to get it into position, and then I had to uh, fill the gaps again with a little bit of putty. So uh, I took in the same time, so I did all the fuselage, uh, I did the nose, I glued uh, the nose basically toward uh, the fuselage. After that, of course, uh, once everything was dried out pretty well, uh, I start to remove um, all the extra putty using some uh, sandpaper and uh, as you know this, this is a long process um, but of course the result of the model will, uh, will be affected. The next stage is uh, to add basically the, uh, the tail on the aircraft and this part is uh, pretty easy but of course um, there will be a little bit of a uh, fiddling. Then while it's drying I decided to add as well a little bit of uh, extra putty to fill up some other gaps and there were still some gaps remain as you can see. So this time I used uh, a white color putty from uh, Tamiya and, uh, to be able to make sure that everything was done. In the meantime, I removed the uh, extra putty on the on the air intake, and uh, I did also the wings, and then work again on the fuselage.
Now that most of our parts are ready, uh, I did something. I had to uh, to rescribe all the panel lines uh, on the MiG-25. So for this, I'm using a regular uh, black pencil and then uh, a razor saw blade um, to allow me to uh, re-engrave all those panel lines. So it's sometimes looks to be easy, but it's not as easy as it looks uh, because you have to to keep your hand quite steady. And uh, as you can see, you do all the all the panel lines. Of course, the pencil marks are leaving after that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put some very fine sandpaper, and then we're going to use a rescribing tool. In my case, I'm using a rescribing tool from uh, Tamia to uh, confirm and to have a pretty uh, a pretty a, a deeper cut basically on the on those panel lines. And that allow us to give us uh, a pretty to get a pretty decent result. So uh, I did that for uh, all the fuselage, uh, the wings, the tail, and uh, I add some more panel lines who were not on the kit. Uh, I have to say that that kit was, was very basic regarding panel lines and the engravement was actually, they were, they were outside. So you had, that's why uh, I had to spend so much time to, uh, to redo all, all those panel lines. But I have to say that uh, the result at the end, it was worth the extra work because the result is really affected and uh, it's uh, affected in the, in the right way. So as you can see, I also had some, uh, some drawing about uh, the MiG-25 with all their pilot lines and that helps me a lot as well to be able to do uh, all this uh, rescribing work. So for the irregular surface, as you can see, I use uh, some adhesive tape as a guide and then I'm able to uh, to do the to rescribe basically the panel lines. The only thing is, after uh, once or two try, basically uh, your razor saw blade is uh, is getting too close to that uh, adhesive tape, so you have to change it regularly. But it's uh, it's the best technique I have. Of course, you can give me some other technique in the comment below. But uh, I have to say that I was quite uh, happy about the the result. The next step in that build will be to uh, finish basically the uh, assembly of, uh, of this uh, MiG-25. So I will have to uh, work on the initially on the wings. Then I had to work on the dihedra of, the, of that MiG-25. Then I add the, the tail and uh, the lower fins. And then uh, we add, of course, uh, we fill up all those gaps between those uh, those. Uh, those parts with some uh, Tamiya putty. Uh, after of course we had to uh, let it dry for a little bit and then uh, we remove the uh, extra putty with some sandpaper. Now we're going to work uh, with uh, the horizontal stabilizer and for this time I use some super glue because the problem was again the diodra of, the of, the, of that part and I knew it would take some time uh, for the glue to, to set, so I prefer to use that uh, super glue, it was very quick, and then it could set up quickly. And then I didn't have to work too much and to worry too much about the dihedra. Of course, uh, sanding down the uh, extra putty that I had to, uh, to add, and uh, the build will be uh, almost finished. So now I'm, I'm what I'm doing, I'm uh, preparing the parts uh, before the paint job. So we know that uh, the canopy and uh, the inside of that cockpit have the same uh, blue-green color. So uh, I did that. I overpainted. Then when you will finish it, you will have the interior uh, blue-gray. Now we are going to work on the ejection seat. So as you can see, it was very basic. So I, I did some re little bit of uh, rescribing uh, on the parachute. Uh, I add uh, some metallic wire to do the, uh, the grip of the uh, ejection seat. Uh, mechanism and then uh, we put the headrest uh, so with some uh, dark uh, green military color and of course I use the wash as normally uh, as you know cockpit are not always very clean through uh, through time I had a little bit of uh, of uh, super glue to fix these and I used some very thin adhesive tape to uh, reproduce the seat belt uh, on that uh, on that uh, MiG-25 so after that, of course, we are going to paint those uh, seat belts. For this, I use uh, some uh, 
some dark green uh, and then of course once they are dried what I will do is I will use some uh, some metallic paint to replicate the buckle after putting the seat into position now we're gonna add some uh, masking tape to uh, prepare our uh, canopy and for this I'm just using some simple Tamiya uh, adhesive tape and uh, I'm putting them uh, around and then I'm using um, a sharp knife basically a sharp tool to be able to uh, cut them at the proper dimension um, after that of course we have to fix it on the fuselage and we're gonna let it dry it's now time to go for the paint job so I'm gonna paint with uh, an exhaust uh, from uh, Vallejo paint I will use that uh, paint color to uh, finish the exhaust and then I'm using another uh, dull aluminium or steel color to uh, paint basically uh, all around the exhaust according to the, the paint shame of the of the MiG-25 then again I'm using some uh, dark green color to uh, prepare the wheels and then some uh, metallic paint to uh, prepare the wheel well and, uh, after that I will have to use some uh, masking technique of course for uh, mainly for the exhaust of uh, that MiG-25 and uh, I have to say that the paint was very delicate and so uh, you have to be very very cautious when you when you uh, put the mask not to tear off all the paint then I had some other uh, part that I was careful with with a dark gray and now what we're going to do we're going to do a pre-shading so pre-shading basically we, you will see later on the on the result you use an uh, airbrush and you paint all the panel lines uh, this works very well basically for all the military uh, jet or modern jets that works uh, as a charm as uh, you don't need to do uh, too much weathering after that as we're using very thin layers of uh, paint so as you can see you I just went through all those panel lines once again and then while it was drying I also put uh, a coat of uh, light gray color on the, the doors and then I have put a very very light layer of uh, light gray and you can see that you're trying to respect basically again all the panel lines and you go inside and you put a little bit of paint and then what you do you put an overall coat but a very very thin coat and that gives you the impression of uh, dirt within the panel lines and uh, that's what we call pre-shading and I think it's the first time I was trying this technique and I'm, uh, I'm going to use that most probably on the future uh, for other models. Now I'm going to work on the, the tires, basically I'm going to paint the tires and for this I'm using basically a, a matte black uh, from Tamiya and after that it's time to, uh, to uh, remove all the mask as well except for the, for the cockpit. So I had a different type of colors and uh, you can see that there is a kind of pre-shading and then we're going to start putting all the decals on the model. And I use this one, uh, Dergemont, I think it's a Russian brand uh, for the decals, as, as the decals I had on the kits were from long time, they were really really in bad shape. So uh, I have to say that those Bergemont uh, decals, they were not too bad uh, to use, easy to, uh, to handle. And then what I had to do is when you put the decals you use some solution uh, and I use some uh, micro uh, decal soil. Um, solution and then basically that soften the decal and it will fill all the panel lines basically and that's the result you want to have so I did both sides of course and then uh, we're going to uh, slowly work uh, on our wash so we're going to do a bit of weathering uh, in the inside those uh, the gear doors 
and the gear hub, the gear bay, and then we're gonna start assembling our uh, our undercarriage. So for this, to avoid having issues uh, when I need something to dry quickly to fit into a position, I normally use some uh, some super glue. After that, uh, it was time to do some weathering on the exhaust, so I use uh, my uh, makeup uh, tools basically, and uh, I'm doing some shading and uh, using some burnt metal to give that aspect of all engine with the overheat on the metal and, uh, and, the t and that, that twist. And um, I have to say that uh, it works pretty well. When this was finished, we add the exhaust and then we put the undercarriage uh, on the wheel well. And for this, again, once again, we have been using some super glue because it's, it's the easiest way. After that, the last probes and remove all the masking tape on the cockpit and uh, that was almost the end. So that's the end result of that uh, MiG-25 from Hasegawa. I hope you enjoy that build with me. Uh, actually, I have to say that I really enjoy that build because I discover new techniques and uh, new things and uh, I think it had that uh, old look of scary models to, uh, of the Cold War. So if you like that video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't uh, already done it. And uh, I will see you soon uh, in uh, the other video. Thank you for watching.